ठीक है सो विशाल कंटिन्यू विद दी चैप्टर ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ अल्जेमर्स डिजीज दैट वी हैड स्टार्टेड इन अर लेस लास्ट लेक्चर ओके सो अंडर दैट वी हैड सीन व्हाट आर दिस सेरेब्रो एक्टिव एजेंट्स व्हाट इज अल्जेमर्स व्हाट हैपेंस एग्जैक्टली वी हैव सीन इन ब्रीफ द पैथोफिजियोलॉजी देन द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ द ड्रग्स व्हिच आई यूज सो मेनली देयर आर three important classes over there cholinergic activators then uh, uh, glutamate receptor antagonist so nmda antagonist also is used as a uh, treatment over there and the third class is the miscellaneous cerebro active drugs okay so the other agents okay these are clubbed together in one class under one class out of which the first example is piracetta Okay, now this drug piracetam, it is actually a cyclic GABA derivative. Okay, GABA derivative it is. GABA, gamma amino butyric acid. As you are all aware of that, it is an inhibitory transmitter in your CNS. Okay, so this piracetam, it is a derivative. It is a cyclic derivative of GABA. Okay, but even though it is a derivative of GABA. still it does not have any gaba like activity like we have seen how gaba acts gaba produces its inhibitory action by acting on the gaba receptors on a chloride channel gaba bzd chloride channel we have already seen under the sedative hypnotic chapter okay so gaba binds to its receptor specifically it's a gaba a receptor it's bind to that receptor and it opens the chloride ion channels so by the inflow of these chloride ions there is a change in potential and results in the stabilization or inhibition is produced okay so that's how it acts as a inhibitory transmitter okay now this drug piracetam though it is a gaba derivative yet it does not produce any gaba like action okay so it will not go and bind to the receptor uh, gaba receptor which is there okay now this drug it is called as a nootropic drug now what is the meaning of this nootropic drug or why it is called as a nootropic drug because it uh, it is a drug that selectively improves the efficiency of higher telencephalic integrative activities okay telencephalic integrative activities meaning your important physiological functions of the brain tenes telencephalon uh, as you are already aware of this is a part of your cerebrum okay which carries out most of the important functions like memory acquirement of your skill remembering thing or retrieving things or perceiving things all these important functions of your brain these are carried out by this part of your brain okay so it's called as a higher center okay so all these activities these are improved by this particular agent okay that's why it is called as a nootropic drug okay but here one new word is used over here purportedly that means it is thought to be uh, improving all these or improving your brain activities through all these mechanisms but yet it is doubtful okay exact mechanism by which it shows the improvement okay that's how it is acting as a nootropic agent still it is a doubtful one okay now let's see how exactly it is improving all these uh, activities okay that's by enhancement of learning and memory okay so learning and memory which generally gets affected in the alzheimer's disease patients so these are enhanced or improved learning is improved memory is improved so person uh, may be able to recall things or remember things or learn new things okay so that activity of your brain is enhanced over here one more uh, uh, theory which has been put forth is facilitation of the synaptic transmission so here synaptic transmissions which are getting affected they may be uh, facilitated even the information transfer between inter hemisphere okay there are two hemispheres as you are already aware of so that transfer of information in between these two hemispheres that is also facilitated by this agent apart from that also it increases the cortical control on the subcortical areas 
this is how or uh, these modalities are supposed to be improved by this uh, nootropic agent that's why it is called as a nootropic agent piracetam okay apart from this another action is uh, it also reduces the blood viscosity viscosity of your blood is uh, reduced and as we have seen the earlier claims it is improving your brain function so because of this it is used in certain countries like india and some other developing countries it has been used to promote the cognitive uh, 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 impairment okay the for the cognitive impairment the treatment of cognitive impairment and dementia okay specifically this is occurring in the elderly so it has been promoted in certain countries for the treatment of this condition also it has been promoted for uh, the use in mental retardation in certain uh, children so it has been used for, uh, for quite a long time however review has shown that uh, you know there are no supports for this uh, therapeutic benefits in all these conditions okay apart from this Uh, in countries like uh, uh, countries of UK, this drug also have been approved for adjunctive treatment. Okay, that means along with other important uh, uh, drugs, it has also been used in combinations for cortical myoclonus. Now, this condition, cortical myoclonus, meaning it results in the jerky, uh, what to say, contractions of your muscles, skeletal muscles. okay it has been used to control such a condition in certain condition uh, certain countries however uh, the use is not recommended in small children though in certain countries it has been used in children also okay to prevent the mental retardation but in uk uh, the use of this drug in children is not recommended it is supposed to be used only in the adults then the side effects these are mild side effects you can see that these are not quite very significant just uh, the gastric discomfort is shown over here nervousness the person may may become nervous so certain cns side effects are also there excitement may be seen insomnia that is lack of sleep dizziness that is the person may feel giddy and skin rashes may appear sometimes so there are very uh, mild and quite insignificant side effects are being produced by this drug then the next drug is pyretinol or it is also known as pyrethioxin now this drug pyretinol it consists of two molecules of pyridoxine okay now pyridoxine pyridoxine you are already aware of it is actually vitamin b6 right it's another name for uh, vitamin b6 okay now here in this compound pyretinol there are two molecules of vitamin b6 which are joined together through a disulfide bridge Okay, so two molecules of vitamin B6 are joined together to disulfide bond. Okay, now though there are two molecules of pyridoxin present in this particular molecule pyrethinol, still it does not have any vitamin B6 activity because they are joined together through a disulfide bond. So it does not have any vitamin B6 activity, but it is claimed to activate the cerebral metabolism. okay so we have seen the under the pathophysiology that the metabolism the cerebral metabolism may be affected in this condition so this drug pyrethinol improves this cerebral metabolism now how it is improving or activating the cerebral metabolism that's by selectively increasing the glucose transport across the blood brain barrier so entry of glucose into the brain is improved and also by improving the regional blood flow in the ischemic brain areas okay so those uh, areas of your brain which are getting affected specifically in those areas the blood flow is increased okay initially we have seen that most of the drugs which are used in alzheimer's disease they are tested for improvement in the blood flow to your brain okay so here this drug is specifically increasing the blood flow to the ischemic areas those areas which are getting affected mainly so selectively it is uh, in regional improvement okay it's not global improvement but regional improvement only to those areas of the brain which are ischemic in nature then the side effects there are certain side effects which are seen initially at the beginning of the treatment mild gi upset may be seen diarrhea nausea vomiting such kind of symptoms may be seen but later on as you continue the treatments skin rashes or itching sensation or taste disturbances also may be produced by this drug 
now coming to the uses for what conditions this particular drug is promoted for or for what purposes it is used for it is used for certain uh, cerebrovascular accidents if it are uh, it has taken place head injuries in certain cases if head injury has taken place the brain may get affected prolonged anesthesia okay so if there is a um, uh, prolonged surgeries to be carried out in whom uh, there has been you know prolonged administration of this anesthesia in such individuals also certain brain functions may get affected so for such purposes it is promoted apart from that infants and children with developmental disorders of uh, cns that is in those uh, children who are mentally retarded or with delayed milestones okay delayed milestones meaning the mental growth is not like a normal child it is delayed okay so the mental growth which is uh, supposed to take place with a particular progression of age that is not taking place over here so that condition is known as delayed milestone so since these drugs improve the brain functioning okay so it can help in these uh, uh, particular uh, pathological conditions also in infants and in children then also it has been promoted to be used in uh, concentration and memory defects okay so wherein uh, certain individual is not able to concentrate okay so the there is some problem with the concentration in a particular like say for example you are listening to a lecture so your concentration or your focus must be on what i am speaking so over here what happens there is a problem in concentration they are not able to concentrate at one particular thing okay so they get distracted very easily okay apart from that memory defects okay those who can't remember anything or senility if it has taken place or organic brain syndromes so in such conditions also this drug has been promoted but the therapeutic benefit is uncertain and that's why it has been withdrawn from certain countries not quite a popularly used drug next drug is dihydroergotoxin or it is also known as codergocrine this is a semi synthetic ergot alkaloid which is having adrenergic blocking property okay so it's an adrenergic uh, blocking drugs uh, which is claimed to increase the cerebral blood flow selectively so it is improving the blood flow apart from that it is also protecting the altered brain metabolism so it is improving the brain metabolism that's how it can be used in conditions like dementia of alzheimer's type or uh, multi in fact dementia so different types of um, uh, dementias can be treated but however again therapeutic value is still not established and the side effects include flushing headache nasal congestion postural hypotension that is upon standing the person may suffer from uh, hypotension gi disturbances and rashes next drug is pyrimidine now this drug is a dopaminergic agonist that is it it can bind to the dopamine receptors and stimulate them so it is because of this activity dopamine is also a, a transmitter in your brain which is controlling certain functions of your brain so by this dopaminergic agonistic property it also improves the memory concentration vigilance that is vigilance meaning your ability to identify some kind of adverse or adverse circumstances or unwanted circumstances giddiness and tinnitus in the end tinnitus meaning the ringing sound in the ear so such kind of uh, things which are happening in the elderly okay so these can be improved okay but again the benefit is substantiated that means there is no as such evidence for this particular improvement in these conditions then also pyrimidine apart from being effective in alzheimer's disease it is also found to be having a mild efficiency in parkinsonism also okay it has been reported but uh, as we have seen it is not clinically used for this condition uh, coming to the side effects these are mild gi complaints then the last drug under this chapter is ginkgo biloba this actually ginkgo biloba it is a chinese plant and the dried extract from this chinese plant uh, it consists of a mixture of ginkgo flavon glycosides okay uh, say for example ginkgolide b these are the chemical constituents so it it consists uh, it contains the glycosides so this ginkgolide which is present this have specifically platelet activating factor antagonistic action platelet activating factor it is naturally present uh, uh, in your body 
so this platelet activating factor as the name implies it activates the platelets so it is responsible for the platelet aggregation so platelet aggregation meaning what will form clot will form right but here this particular platelet activating factor can activate your uh, platelets in such a way that this aggregation will take place even in an intact blood vessel generally where the uh, clotting should take place whenever there is any damage to your blood vessel so platelet aggregation will take place and it will result in clot formation and prevent the blood loss but this platelet activating factor can also result in formation of thrombosis thrombosis is a condition wherein there is a clot formation or the plug formation platelet plug formation in an intact blood vessel which is not damaged okay so what this ginkgoite b or these glycosides do is they have platelet activating factor antagonistic action so they will antagonize this action okay so because of this these may be utilized in or they have therapeutic utilization in cerebral thrombosis and infarcts okay and due to the same reason these uh, this uh, extracts from this plant also is helpful in prevention of the cerebral impairment which is taking place in multi infarct uh, dementia okay so it is uh, supposed to be causing improvement in cognitive and behavioral disorders in the elderly okay however trials are not supporting you know much improvement in the memory or dementia again the use is doubtful coming to the side effects it produces mild upper gi symptoms uh, but iv infusion okay that is if you continuously infuse this drug it may result in fever fever may be uh, precipitated shock and even arrhythmias may be precipitated so this finishes the chapter the important questions relating to this chapter are classification of the uh, uh, alzheimer's uh, treatment and this is a very important question pharmacotherapy of alzheimer's disease so you need to discuss all the drugs which are coming under this particular chapter you have to first of all discuss what alzheimer's disease is in brief and the, give the classification and discuss each class and how it is helpful in this uh, condition okay so this finishes the chapter